Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start our playthrough of Shadows of Killforth. If you'd like to see how to set up the game, check out the video before this on the playlist. Otherwise, hang out here for the playthrough. Now, we chose a demon. I'd like to give our demon a name, so we're going to call him Lucius. So, Lucius is starting off. We know what we're trying to do. We're trying to get to the Badlands. Our overall goal is to find the Tomb of the Ancients. We're trying to seek their power out and become as powerful as they are. <laughs> and then take one of them out, called the Bishop of Pride. Before we jump in, I just want to show you one of the alternative rules that we're going to play with for this scenario. Technically, when you complete each chapter, you're supposed to spend five gold and do that regale action. You can alternatively have it where you spend gold equal to whatever chapter it is times two. So we'd only pay two gold for this one. Then for chapter two, we'd play four gold. Then we pay six gold for chapter three and then eight gold for chapter four. I'm going to do it that way because I think that's it, it kind of makes sense. It's the, You have to use more gold as you level up, but it's also easier for you to get gold. And so I, I kind of feel like it's um, it's progressing with your progression of how much gold you need. So I know it says here spend five gold. We're only going to spend two, and then we'll uh, increase it after each chapter. The other thing I wanted to show you is because your actions are equal to your health, what they suggest doing is you take your health and you put your action tokens on top of them. And then if you lose any health, you lose that action token and health, uh, like so. So since we have four health, we have four action tokens. So what we do during daybreak, we've already gained our four action tokens. We can decide what we'd like to do. We could simply just move. And remember, I think the first place we're going to go to is this Badlands because we're looking for those Badlands keywords. But if I just walk in there and an enemy shows up, that enemy is going to surprise me. I can, if I want, to become hidden. Now, it takes me an action to do so, but if I become hidden and I move in there and an enemy shows up, I, first of all, gain surprise on that enemy and uh, may be able to avoid him completely. I do, though, have a pretty strong uh, fight strength of four. Uh, so do I want to take the chance? Because, I mean, using an AP is using an AP. But <laughs> if I get hurt, then I'm losing actions for the next round. Yeah, okay. I think I think I just talked myself into it. I'm going to spend one AP to go hidden. We'll be hidden for the rest of the round. And, and any time we can choose to not be hidden. And at the end of the round, we'll, be, we'll become unhidden. So that was action one. Then action two, we're, we are going to move into the Badlands. So this place is called the Desolate City. <laughs> now, the moment you move into a location, if there's no encounter cards there, you need to grab an encounter card and reveal it. So we'll grab a Badlands card, and then we'll flip it there and reveal it. And we have a, a Spirits. This Spirits is a quest. It has the Badlands keyword, which is great. It has a revealed effect. So since we reveal it, we'll immediately do it. It says the first hero relocates each stranger in play by one location to, to a location that is one further away from this location. Basically, it's pushing everybody, all the strangers away. Well, there aren't any on the board, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, here's the thing. In order for us to conquer it, we need to do a study test. Our study is two. <laughs> that means we'll be rolling dice. I haven't talked about how you do tests. You do tests by rolling dice, trying to get fives and sixes for successes. I would have to try and get six fives and sixes with only two dice. I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> so as much as I would love to be able to do that quest, because I'd love to get that Badlands, I just don't think I'm smart enough. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this quest here. You can do that. Since it's a quest, you don't have to do the encounter. What I'm going to do instead is spend action three to move into the Divine Heights. Now, if I had gone here and I could obtain more health, this, this location says heroes gain one, a, one a, um, AP, one action point, when they move into this location for the first time on any day. Oh, I guess we just gain one action point. So when we moved in there, that was a free action, essentially, because we moved, we used an action, we gained it back. So we still have two actions. However, we are going to have to reveal a mountain card. Oh, we have a phoenix. Now, is that beautiful art or what? Look at that card, you guys. I mean, I love Lord of the Rings. I, I even really enjoy a lot of art from other games, but you just, I mean, look at that phoenix. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay, so this is an enemy. So uh, we are going to have to encounter that unless we want to try and sneak away. <laughs> enemy, animal, it has the mountain keyword, which we don't need. It has a map effect. When a battle starts, perform a study three test. If you fail, the battle ends immediately and relocate to an adjacent location and lose all your AP. Oh, well, I was thinking I could attack this guy, but we have to pass a study three test. I just told you my study is only two. 
How do I take the chance? I could use a fate token or discard that rumor that's in my hand. I don't want to do that. But I could do one of those things so that I could still attack this phoenix. I'd have to pass a study three. I'm only rolling two dice, but I do have these fate tokens. If I roll a five and a six, great. I, I don't know. Do I really want to do this? I think if I do defeat this, though, I would have him on my side. I could roll an additional four dice. Let's give it a shot. If I fail, I lost a day. Let's let's try it. We'll go ahead and grab two dice. We'll roll for fives and sixes. <laughs> Yes, I am telling you, Lucius is amazing. Two sixes, we'll spend that fate token for three successes. This is just giving us the opportunity to fight him. <laughs> now we're going to actually have to fight him. So we now have to do a combat with the Phoenix. So our fight level is four, but we do have surprise because we were hidden. So our first round of combat, we get to roll five dice. The Phoenix <laughs> will roll four dice. Yeah. Uh, any fives or sixes will do damage to us. Any fives or sixes, we get to do damage to it. It has four health, uh, and, and this is a confrontation. So we keep rolling until I try and run away, I'm defeated, or we defeat the phoenix. I also have already called on the fates to help us. So using that fate token meant that I cannot call on the fates or discard that rumor to get additional um, uh, successes. So it's just going to be about these rolls. So we're white. The phoenix is black. Let's roll it up. Looking here, I've got two white successes and two black successes. So we take two points of damage. Whenever you take damage, you always take damage first from your uh, health that has action markers left on them. So I will have no more actions after this. Those two are both gone. Great. But I've done two points of damage to that um, phoenix. Now I could run away or I could risk it. <laughs> I guess I'm going to risk it. I don't know. This is probably not a good idea, but let's see. Uh, I have to lose one die, you guys, because I'm no longer surprising that phoenix. That phoenix sees me coming from a long ways. We'll roll up. Oh, look at this. 411. We've got a 5 and a 6. You better believe it. We just took out that phoenix. Because we've defeated this phoenix, we now have two options that we can do. Our first option is we can gain 4 gold. Or we could forego that four gold and draw from the loot bag. Uh, four gold. I'm definitely taking the four gold. <laughs> so that's going to give us five gold right now. We started with one. Then what we can do is either take this Phoenix card and put it into our hand as a rumor, or we can draw an item and just uh, discard this, uh, this card from play. Because of our Diabolist ability, I'm going to go ahead and keep the Phoenix in my hand, and then I'll do my deed action on my Diabolist uh, class card. My card here states that I can attach an enemy rumor to this card, limit one attached enemy. I'm going to attach this Phoenix. <laughs> I'm going to bring this Phoenix back from the dead when I have a fight, and I get to add, for, and I believe it says during a fight test, so that whole fight test, I'll get to roll an additional four dice thanks to its four attack. Yeah, that's why I decided to stretch it and grab him. <laughs> I mean, I could have been totally annihilated there, but you know what? <laughs> you do what you got to do. So we now have a phoenix that we can reanimate. We have zero more AP, so we're going to go ahead and just stay where we are. We have to. We're going to make camp. We will draw a night card and then start round two. We'll grab this card. And we have, oh, a piercing sleet revealed. Place two obstacles at each location for each place it has. So no location right now has a place, so we don't have to worry about that. It has a map. When pl a place enters play, place an obstacle on it. And this is a weather card, so that will stay active until another weather card comes out. We also will have the eastern marshes uh, go to gloom. That's still mountains. That's not badlands, so no plot will come out. The Eastern Marches are right over here. We will flip that to Gloom. We'll go ahead and start our next day. We'll start off with only two actions because we only have two health. <laughs> well, you know what? Lucius was so distracted by that Phoenix, he forgot about his Tiger Form ability. We could have changed our attack to plus two. Yeah, that would have made a huge difference. Well, who knows? I might, I might have missed with two additional dice, but I got to remember that I can do that. That's a deed action. All deed actions are free and can be, uh, can be done at any time. So, like I said, I only have two health, so I'm, I only can do two actions this round. I could rest, but who wants to do that? That's boring. <laughs> I'm trying to get my rumor that's in my hand down, and I can discover it here at the Sea of Clouds. So that's why I want to get here and discover it, and that will give me a free rest action each, each round. So, yeah, let's, 
let's take that chance. I'm going to spend my first action moving into the Sea of Clouds. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not hidden. So that means if an enemy comes out, we're going to be surprised. We'll go ahead and grab a card, and we have Retribution. This is an event. So we read it and it says, add the first enemy from the mountain deck to an adjacent location and place your claim token on it. Only you can encounter this enemy. To other heroes, it does not exist. <laughs> Whoa. So I'm just going to go draw until I find an enemy. Oh, I found an enemy. Our first one. Oh, you know what it is? It's an ogre brute. Look at this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and put him in the adjacent location, this forging castle. Oh, that's totally thematic. I'm not even going to worry about placing our token on it since we're the only player of the game. <laughs> uh, and then this event just gets discarded. Okay. So if we want, we can go there and fight him because he's an enemy. Okay. So because that's all that happened here, we can do our second action as our discovery action. And that means we can discover the rumor that's in our hand. We'll go ahead and play this Jingasa down on the table. Now you can see how it has an asterisk here and it says attire. You can only have one of each asterisk uh, keyword of cards out on the table. The other thing is the number six is very important in this game. You can have six different cards out on the table. You can have six rumors in our hand, but that's the maximum amount. Uh, you can have as many keywords as you want. You can just only have one of each. So I can no longer place out another attire card, just so you know. This is going to end our second round, but we are going to use the Veil action here, the Deed Veil. What, what Veil means is you have to exhaust it, turn it 90 degrees, and you can't use it again until the beginning of the next round. So at the end of this round, we'll ready this card back up, and we can use the rest, well, gain one rest AP. We can use that every round, one time. If we want to prevent one loss of HP, we actually have to sacrifice this card. We discard it and lose it. But for now, I will definitely gain this HP so that next round I have three actions. That was the end of our second round. Super quick. Well, thanks to what we did with that uh, Phoenix. <laughs> and our next card, our night card, is the Incursion. Ooh, so this, oh, this is, no, this is Badlands. We need to have a Plains card to have a plot come out. So this is revealed. Doom guards heal two HP. <laughs> yes, that's us. Uh, Rosen knights gain one gold. So we don't gain the gold. We'll gain two HP. The most we can gain is one. But that's great. That means we'll have four actions. And then it says all heroes we can choose sides. So we can change a side. Well, I'm gonna stay with the doom guard. We do also have to remember this desolate city will be flipped to gloom. The desolate city is right here. It's actually where we have that quest. We will flip this over. This is now gone to gloom as well. We can go ahead and start the next round. I definitely want to get to this black cave. We can hopefully get a Badlands card. Maybe not a quest that's so challenging as the one that we just saw. We have a total of four actions this round. So I'm going to go ahead and use one to move ourselves into the black cave. Now when we're in this black cave, it says Hero may, heroes may prove one move action here to move directly to the Serene Lake. Kind of helps you to jump around the board. But first we have to draw an, uh, an encounter card. And I did not go hidden because I do have that Phoenix. Hopefully, you know, if, if I have to roll or do some attacking, hopefully the Phoenix will help us. <laughs> Let's see what we find. We'll grab a card from the Badlands and we get a Leopard, an enemy. That will be rolling five plus one because it has surprise six dice. Well, at least it only has three health. I could try and sneak away, but I, I definitely want this because it has the Badlands keyword. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do, that's a five. If I defeat this and put this into my hand instead of getting loot, I could exchange that Phoenix for the Leopard. Well, <laughs> but I want to be able to get items. Hmm. Well, regardless, we have to do a combat here. We can't sneak because we are not hidden. So he'll be rolling six dice. We'll be rolling our four from our base stat, plus we'll add our phoenix, so that's a total of eight. Eight dice to his six. Eight to six, we're white, he's black. Let's give him a roll. Okay, oh man, he's got one, two, three successes, so did three points of damage to me. I got one, two, and I'm definitely going to use a fate token so that I can just finish this battle. <laughs> uh, yeah. So three successes, that will take him out, but that three damage means that we're going to lose one, two, and all three of our actions. Bummer. Now I'm realizing, of course I'm going to keep this leopard in my hand. I need it for the Badlands keyword. So this leopard help us figure out a little bit more about the Tomb of the Ancients. So I'll keep this in my hand, but instead of the two money, I'll go ahead and draw from the loot bag. 
but I also want you to see that I'm going to do a Deed Veil here and gain one Rest AP to use right now to get that second health back. Here we have the loot bag. I'm going to go ahead and grab one out of here. I think most of the loot is actually good now. Uh, so we got two gold. Cool. We essentially got exactly what we would have gotten if we hadn't done a loot. <laughs> we have a total of, what, uh, seven? Seven gold. Nice. I just want you to see we have our two health here. Here is our first Badlands card. We need another Badlands and a Stranger card. We'll end our turn and we will flip our next Knight card. Ooh, this is a quest, a destroy quest. Oh, five study or five influence. Revealed, place this quest at the Towers of Cairn. Ooh, this place will now also get our first plot card. Not that I'm really excited. It sounds like I'm excited about it, but it's actually not good. <laughs> so how plots work. As those plots come out on the board, if we don't take care of them and we go fight the boss, the boss will get an additional benefit for all the plots on the board. So we're going to want to go and take care of those plots if we can. So what we'll do is we'll place this new religious cult over in the Towers of Cain. The Towers of Cain are going to be uh, we will be placed into gloom, and we're going to draw a, um, a plot card and place it there as well. And we have the Shrine of Pride. Now, if we have to defeat this, it says all heroes must veil all skills, which if you have a skill, which we haven't learned yet, you would have to exhaust them to say that they're done being used for this round. If we don't do that and we decide to fight the boss uh, when, when this is still out on the table, we'll have to veil all of our allies. None of our allies will be able to be used in that final fight. And right now, I don't have any allies, but if I find any, that would stink. <laughs> Oh, and I have to mention, look at this is a place. So because of that weather right now, we have that piercing sleet. We have to put an obstacle on here. This obstacle means that we cannot actually do anything with this Shrine of Pride until we remove that. When we remove that obstacle, we do get to draw one loot card, uh, loot token, but then that takes an action. And as you can see, especially right now at the beginning, I'm getting, what, two to three actions around? So <laughs> it's precious actions. You know where that Towers of Cain is? <laughs> way up here far far away from us so yeah getting over there is going to be a pain but i think we're going to have to at some point we do not want that out well i mean granted if we don't get any allies we can leave it because that negative effect isn't going to do anything to us to start this round we only have two ap i'm going to exhaust jingasa so that we can gain another health and don't forget we can't use a rest ap if there's an encounter card in our location that's why i wanted to do it now there's no encounter cards in our location so we can do that then what i think i'm going to do although it's not fun but i need to do it i'm going to spend one action to do another rest so i'll get a total of four actions next round and then for my final action i'm going to go ahead and do a search I can do a search because there's no obstacles present. There's no stranger, place, quest, or enemy. Uh, the location is not the shrine itself. So what I can do is I can draw and place an encounter matching that terrain type, which is the uh, Badlands, which is what we want. But that will use our final AP for this round. We'll draw our top card of the Badlands, and we have a blacksmith. Here we have our first stranger. So the nice thing about strangers is we do not immediately get into a fight. We can confront them if we want. If we did that, we'd have to fight them at a level four. <laughs> He'd be rolling four dice. What we can do though is try and influence him. We don't have any actions this round, so we'll have to wait till next round. But yeah, that's the one disadvantage is we have to spend another action to do something with him, but we can either try and influence him or try and fight him. Now, if we try and influence him, if that first roll when we influence, we get no successes, then he immediately becomes an enemy and he'll fight us. And so he'll use his four. But he's only at two, actually. So we should be able to do that, hopefully. We'll roll three dice. Uh, he is a stranger and Badlands. We need either one of those keywords. So I definitely like that blacksmith. We've completed our four actions. I am so glad I did my rest first because you cannot do a rest when there is an encounter card in your space. So glad we did that. Okay, we have the Diplomat Visit. Okay, this is in the uh, Wheeled Heart. That's a forest location. It is a stranger and a noble. Revealed. Place a stranger at the, the Wheeled Heart. Uh, that's the forest spot. Well, what do you know? That is right next to us. We will flip this and place her there. Let's go ahead and use our first action for this round to try and influence this blacksmith. We're looking for two successes. We get to roll three dice. Come on, fives or sixes, fives or sixes. Okay, we've got one five, so we have one success. 
Uh, since we have one success, he doesn't turn into an enemy. But he hasn't decided he's going to come with us yet. He's going, uh, I don't know, you look kind of weird. You kind of look like a demon. <laughs> Lucius, tell me why we should go with you. We tell him about the tomb of the ancients and how we're going to seek all and find all this power. And he can have some too. And let's see if he listens. So we're spending our second action. We just need one more success. And we rolled another five. Awesome. That means we have two successes. So we convinced the blacksmith he heard power and riches. He's coming with us. Since we convinced the blacksmith to come with us, we'll go ahead and keep him, but I don't want one gold. Instead, I'm going to draw from the loot bag. Here's to hoping we find something good. Let's see. We'll grab this one. Oh, one gold. So far, drawing from the loot bag has given us exactly the same thing as it would have been had we just grabbed the loot on the card. I swear, there are different ones in here. We'll see them eventually. So we've used two of our actions. I think we're going to use our third one to search here again. We're looking for another Badlands card if we can. We've already found a blacksmith here. Well, who else are we going to find? Let's see. We're going to find a musician. The musician's playing in the Black Cave. Huh. She has Stranger and Badlands, which is great. We have a map ability that heroes may perform rest actions here. Oh, so you can still rest even if she's here. Now, here's the thing about her. She would be hard to influence. She's not going to want to come with us. <laughs> We're, we're a demon. Lucius is a demon. So what we're going to do, instead of bringing her with us, we're going to attack her. <laughs> Sounds terrible. So what we can do is we can just simply confront her. It'll take our fourth action, but neither of us will have surprise. We're going to use our effect to go into tiger form. So we get plus two to our fight value. Playing this type of character is a little bit out of character for me, but hey, it's good for you to try, right? <laughs> so I'm going to do tiger form with my deed action here. I gain plus two fight until breaking camp ends. So right now my fight is six to her three. So here's Kelsa playing some beautiful music in the caves, trying to entertain people. And what do we do? We turn into tiger form and attack her. <laughs> what does she do? Let's see. Well, we got one two two successes here what number is this oh that's only a one uh she got no successes i think we'll just take the two damage here and we'll go again so we fought her for two now since we're doing a confronting action she's an enemy now so we will continue to fight her we don't have to use ap we'll just grab the same dice i'm gonna grab a different die here so you can actually see that pip uh let's see she now sees what what we're trying to do is attack her so let's see if she fights back she does not. Look at that. Two, two, one. And we got another success. Yeah. <laughs> we took her out. She unfortunately didn't have much of a chance. Going against a tiger. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so she will definitely keep in her hand. But then once again, instead of looting for one coin, let's see if we can find one coin in the loot bag. We'll go ahead and grab in here. Come on. Give us something other than one gold coin. Nope. No, no. Nope, just one gold coin. <laughs> I am destined to get exactly what I was supposed to as if I just looted the card. Well, I may have just taken out a helpless girl, which I feel a little bit bad about, but I am going to be able to regale for my first part of my quest. That's what matters, right? That's what matters. We have war revealed. Uh, Doom guard gain one fate. Yes, I'm glad I'm Doom guard. So we'll gain one fate. All heroes choose sides. Okay, that's been two good things on the, uh, the Doom guard. Maybe I'm going to switch. Nah, nah, nah. I, so far it's been treating me well. Let's stay with it. The Forsaken Glade will go to Gloom. The Forsaken Glade is right up here. Yeah, so how many turns have we gone? I think we've done five turns, plus we had to discard two. So that's already seven locations that are already into Gloom. And I'm just getting chapter one of my saga done. Whew, I'm going to run out of time real fast. Well, I think we better make taking that musician out worth it. And let's do that by doing our first regale action. We can do this in any location. You can only do this once per round. We're not going to be able to regale chapter two. We haven't gotten any other rumor cards in our hand. But what we need to do is we need to spend, and because I'm playing with that advanced variant, I only have to spend two gold on this one because it's equal to the chapter level times two. So two gold. We have to show that we either have assets on the table or cards in our hand for Badlands. We have that here with this blacksmith. Then we have to have a stranger. We have that with the musician. And then another Badlands, and we have that with the leopard. And I am realizing, you guys, when we defeated that leopard, we did not grab a loot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now, actually, before I forget, because I'm going to forget. It's so easy to forget. We'll grab one loot, and we get, oh, it's a map. It says, relocate to any Badlands location. Well, that would have been nice. 
we have that. Uh, also, remember when I told you about the uh, rule of six? You can have six rumors, six assets. The other thing is you can have six loot tokens. Those are the rules of the six. So we're going to take those three rumors I just showed you and put them in the discard piles. And we have now completed chapter one. And this was our first action this round. The first port of call in your quest is to track through the grasslands to discover those who worship the ancients as gods, terrible people, chanting and whispering signals the presence of the evil cultists practicing their ceremonies in the name of the flash. As stone-cold oval dials adorned with glistening, whimpering bodies of their victims comprises the centerpiece of this hellish altar. Stop the cultists at all costs and ransack their lair for something to help you in your journey. So here we need a quest, an items, and a planes card. We already have an item thanks to that Jingasa, so we have that one done. We need to find a quest and we will need to get to a planes location. And now it will cost us four gold and a regale action to complete chapter two. One of the perks of completing a chapter of your saga is you gain one additional HP. Now, from how I understand it, you don't get an action for that HP this round, but next round we'll have five actions instead of four. When we complete chapter two, we can go to six. Complete chapter three, we'll go to seven. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, here we have our skills. We can choose one skill that we will have for the remainder of the game. We can either have Jujitsu. It is a deed veil. Your foe rolls one less die in this battle round. So you remember how we're rolling multiple times? Sometimes we do combat. That's only good for one battle round. When it's a fight test, I believe that's for the whole combat, which is multiple rounds. Or we can have Hero. When you draw a Badlands encounter, draw one extra encounter card and choose one to discard. Hmm. I, I like this one. I mean, this is cool, but I, I don't know how much more I'm going to be trying to go to the Badlands. And having a foe roll one less die, yeah, that basically negates surprise. We're currently in this black cave. This black cave, we can spend one move action to move all the way over to the Serene Lake, which is actually a plains location. And we'll be one away from this quest if ever we want to go back and try and complete that quest. So I think let's go ahead and use one AP. So we'll have two left and move ourselves over to the Serene Lake. But that does mean we have to draw a plains card and reveal it. And we have a courier. Looking here, this courier has a weakness for merit. We don't have any merit. Are you kidding? We're a demon. <laughs> Lucius is not a meritable demon. Uh, we have two for fight, two for sneak, three for influence, only two health. And he's got the planes keyword, which is exactly what we need for our chapter two. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. We are going to attack you. <laughs> so we're going to spend our third out of our fourth actions to attack our courier. The courier here will only roll two dice, but what we're going to do is we're going to use our jujitsu skill that we just obtained. Your foe rolls one less die in this battle round. I'm hoping we can take them out in one round, and let's try and minimize the amount of damage we take. So we're going to roll four. He's only going to roll one. We're looking for two successes. That'll take him out. <laughs> we come right at him, and let's see. We've got a five. That's actually it. We've only done one point of damage to him. We did gain that extra fate token. Let's use it. We're going to use it to get two successes right off the bat so we defeat him. For our loot action, we'll definitely keep him in our hand. We like that planes keyword. And let's go ahead and do the loot bag instead of one coin. We'll go ahead and grab a loot token and we get boots. Sneak plus one for one test. Cool. We have one more action left. Why don't we go ahead and do a search? We have full health, so let's see what we find. We find an actor. Oh, it's another stranger. Uh, map weakness arcane. <laughs> Guess what? We are arcane. We just come near this actor and all of a sudden he goes, um, yep, I'll go with you. I'll do what you say. <laughs> so with a weakness, we don't even have to take an action. We'll immediately claim him as a reward. That is fantastic. And you know what we can do? We can finally actually claim one of these things and get one of the rewards instead of the card because I don't need another planes card. We'll place him in the discard pile, and we'll flip the top ally card, and we have an enchanter. Oh, she'll give us plus one to our study. I, I have to go to the desolate city to be able to actually discover her. And then when we do, we can defeat an insane stranger at your location. We can do that as a free action. And she's worth four gold. I am definitely going to put that in my hand. I like that. I'm also, instead of gaining the one gold that was on that card of that actor, we're going to go ahead and grab a random loot. And we have, ooh, what's this one? This one's Buckler. Uh, it says, prevent the loss of one HP. That is sweet. 
That is a super sweet loot. We are finally finding some good loot. We've done our actions for this round. We'll flip our next night. We have a festival. Okay, this is a place. We still have that piercing sleet, so I need to remember to place an obstacle token on here. It says revealed. Place this place. <laughs> place this place. Place this place at the divine heights. And, uh, oh, when you defeat this, you gain two loot. And this is at the divine heights. The divine heights are right here. We'll flip that and place this festival with an obstacle on that location. We have that enchanter rumor. I'd love to get that down on the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one AP to move into the desolate city. That's exactly where we need to be to be able to discover her. So we'll spend our second AP to do a discovery action. We'll now go ahead and place this down on the table. We now have an asterisk for arcane, so we cannot place another arcane item. Anything that has the asterisk arcane word, we cannot place that down as an asset. Lucius is not exactly the strongest studier. <laughs> as you can see, he's slowly gaining his skills of study. Uh, he has three here, but we have a quest right in our location. If we can complete that quest, we can get our chapter two done already. I was not expecting that. So I think we're going to try it. We can roll three dice and we can do this up to three times. Now, if I roll three times and I don't get enough successes, we're going to have to start all the way over on the next day. Here are three dice. We need lots of fives and sixes. We're trying to get six total successes on three rolls. So that's roll one. That's 100% failed. Hmm. Okay, are we going to keep trying? That looks to me like we're going to fail. <laughs> well, let's try it. Come on. I believe in us. Action two. Like I said, he's not very good at studying. And he gets two threes and a two. So even if we roll all three successes... With our final action, we're not, it's not going to be good enough. Okay, what do we want to do? You know what we can do? We can go to the market. So we'll spend our final action to move to the marketplace or the shrine. And our next turn, we can do a market action and actually purchase an asset. Maybe even a spell or something. Uh, something that might be able to help us. So let's go ahead and end the round. That was our fifth action. Let's draw a night card. We'll draw our top night card, and we have a wintry cold. Ooh, this is going to replace our weather. So this piercing sleet has finally gone away, and it's been changed into a wintry cold. <laughs> kind of makes sense. Turned into snow. Reveal. Place two obstacles at each location for each quest it has. Oh, <laughs> that spirit's place? That's a quest. We're going to place two there. Do you remember where that plot is, the Shrine of Pride? Well, there's also a quest in that location, so now we have a total of three obstacles in that location as well. Wow, that was terrible. When a quest enters play, place an obstacle at its location. Okay, and the Arid Ruins is going to go into Gloom, and that's a Plains location, so we'll also draw a plot card, and that will be placed in the Arid Ruins. In order to defeat this, we have to discard one place Rumor. Fortunately, it's not a quest, so it will not get uh, an obstacle on it, but still, it's another one that's out. If we do not get rid of this, when we fight the Ancient, uh, every time a battle round starts, each hero has to sacrifice one asset on the table. <laughs> we, we're going to have to get rid of that. That is way too brutal. The Air Ruins is over here. We'll flip that, and we'll place the Tower of Pride in this location. For our first action this round, we're going to do a market action. So what you can do in the marketplace, you can only do this in this location, the shrine, the center, uh, the center tile. You can do three things. First thing you can do is you can spend gold to regain health. I don't need to do that. Second thing you can do is choose one of the rewards, uh, one of the reward types, draw three of them, and purchase them, purchase one of them at the gold value, and those immediately become assets. You don't have to discover them. They immediately are assets down on the table. The third thing you can do is you can sell any of your assets or rumors that you have at half price. I want to keep everything that I have, but I do want to see if I can maybe get a title that might be good. I've got a good item. Let's see if I can find a good title. The titles are here, so let's go ahead and grab three of them, and then we'll look at these. Wow, these look totally sweet. We have the Lord's Servant. This would give us plus one to our study, and it has a deed sacrifice ability. Defeat a plot card at any location. And look, it has the merit keyword. Remember that guy we had met before? Ah, oh, yeah, it's the courier that's in our hand. He had weakness to merit, if we'd had that out. Uh, over here we have the poacher. Uh, you can defeat an animal enemy at any location, or at your location. God, that would have been great for that, uh, what was that, that jaguar? And then finally we have the debt payer. 
Uh, gain fight plus two during battles with strangers who have your enemy tokens. This also would have been great because I have attacked, what, two or three strangers now? <laughs> oh, these are all good. But I think I'm going to go for the Lord Servant. I like the plus one here. And at any point, we could just discard this. And then we can defeat a plot card at any location, which is amazing. We'll lose the three gold. And then our study now will be four instead of three. You know, I'm thinking that I'm going to spend our second action and do the same thing. I'm going to do another market action. And this time... I'm going to go for spells. I'm going to grab three spell cards and see if we can buy one of them. Well, I'll be. All of these we can actually play. We have a total study of four. So you can see here, this tells you what study you need to have in order to use that actual spell. So since we're at four, we could play any or use any three of these. Uh, this one is aid. It says uh, what you can do, you can veil this. Lose one HP to place one HP on this card. Limit two HP on this card. And then whenever you would lose one HP, you may uh, you may discard one HP from this card instead. Uh, and that's okay. That's not great. Uh, here we have the Flame Walk. When a battle round starts, gain fight plus three until the end of the battle round. Uh, yes, I like that one. And Foresight. You can sacrifice this uh, to discard a weather card from play. Gain two tokens, fate tokens, from the supply. I like those fate tokens. I like this fight. <laughs> I mean, plus three, and if I go into tiger mode, that's plus two. So that would pay, make, make our fight, what, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the first attack? Yeah, I'll pay three beautiful gold for that. That does mean I only have one gold left. And remember, for me to regale, I'm going to need four gold. So I'm going to need some more gold, but I'll still take that. This is awesome. This is also kinetic, so I can hold on to that. Just so you guys can see, here are my four assets that I've played so far. This Lord Servant is hilarious because I'm totally lying about this. I'm not the Lord Servant, not as a demon. I'm just going to use this so I can get rid of a plot card. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can see I've got the Enchanter, the Lord Servant, Flame Walk, and the Jingasa. For my final three actions, I'm going to move myself into here back with these spirits and spend the final two to get rid of these two obstacles. That means I get to draw two loot tokens from the loot bag. So our first one is gain one gold. And our second one is ooh, another map token. And that one says we can relocate to any mountain location. That'll end this round. We are going to get ourselves all ready to take on those spirits. We have a political scheme revealed. When breaking camp ends, which isn't right now, Rosen Knights lose one AP and Doom Guard gain one AP. Awesome. So I think that means I'll have six AP this round. And then we can choose sides. I'm definitely staying with the Doom Guard. We will have the Sea of Clouds go to Gloom. We were actually just there right at the beginning of the game discovering that Jingasa. Now let's go ahead and take care of these spirits. We have six AP this round. We'll spend our first one to try and deal with this quest. We roll four dice for our study. I can feel it. Wow. Nope, that's all fails. <laughs> we'll try for action two. Come on, dice. Give me fives and sixes. Okay, there are, there's two successes. Oh my gosh, we need six of these. So there's two successes. Here's action three. Pick up these dice and we'll roll. Okay, there's two more successes. That's four. <laughs> okay, so then we'll use action four. We will roll these. We just need, well, we need two more successes here. Two more, two more. Perfect, actually we got three. That is enough. Ha, oh, these spirits, we finally defeated them. We'll definitely be taking the spirits into our hand and we'll go ahead and loot them or do a loot. And we've got another map. This one's for planes locations. And now we have five loot tokens, you guys. So I got to start using some of these. Well, we have the rumors and assets that we need to be able to finish chapter two, but we don't have the money because <laughs> I was too greedy and spent too much time in the marketplace leveling up our character. So we're going to have to go chasing some money. We're going to spend one action to move into here, but then you can see here, you gain one AP when you move in here. So we still have our two actions left. I will then use one of those two to get rid of this obstacle just so I can draw loot. This is what I'm actually hoping to get some money. And let's see, what do we get? No, we get another map token and that's going to be our sixth one. So I've got to start using these. This one, we can move to any forest location. And for our final action, we want to get ourselves out of this location because it's in gloom. I could either go to the mountains or I could go to the forest. Hmm. 
let's go ahead and move to the forest. We haven't done that yet. This is the spider grove. We'll grab the top card here, and we have a place. Now, the wintry cold is only for quest locations, and so this is a map, uh, has a map ability. Heroes may move from here to any location as their move action. Whoa, that is actually super sweet. I don't want to defeat this. I was thinking I could maybe just take this out at the beginning of our next turn just to get another rumor, but I don't think we're going to because we can use that to move anywhere we want. Although it is tempting, it does give us three money if we do defeat it. Hmm. Oh, and I should state we technically lost one AP by moving into here, but that's fine. We didn't have any AP left any anyways. <laughs> Let's go ahead and flip our next night card, and we have the Stampini Buffalo. Ooh, this is uh, revealed. All heroes not hit and lose one gold. No, that would be me. I need a total of four gold. I only have two, and now I just lost one, so I only have one. Okay, then we have uh, then place this quest, and so this is a quest that means it's going to, because of the weather, gain one obstacle, and we're going to place this in a plains location. You know what that means. We're bringing out another plot card. This is the third plot card. We got to start dealing with these. You know, if you watch my Gloom of Killforth playthrough, a lot of things went right in that one. <laughs> that doesn't always happen. Okay, here's a quest card. Guess what that means? It's also going to have an obstacle. Uh, this one, we'd have to discard two loot. That actually might not be a bad place for me to go. I have so much loot. Uh, so this is going to go in that same location, the um, Elvathor Saina. Well, it looks like the location right next to us is falling to Gloom. And then we'll be placing both of these here uh, for us that we can actually handle. That we're right next to it. Well, I had to give it a lot of thought, but Lucius has decided he's going to go for this drowned temple. If he does, he'll get the three gold that he needs to be able to do his regale action. And the easiest one is probably going to be the fight. Well, either one. The fight or, or the uh, study, actually, are both were fours. So we're rolling four dice. We're trying to get a total of three successes. Let's do it. We'll use our first action, rolling four dice. Let's see, we get absolutely no successes. <laughs> oh, well. We'll do our second one. Come on. I believe in you. We'll be able to get through this. Okay, that's two successes. We need a total of three. Mm, I'm all for not wasting time. Let's use our fate for our third success. So we've completed this. We've only used two actions then. We'll definitely grab the three gold, and then we get to either grab a title and put it into our hand as a rumor, or we can put that drowned temple. I don't really think I need a place or a forest card, so I'm gonna go ahead and just discard that. Let's see what we have as a, as a title. We have a victor. Deed, when you defeat an encounter, gain one loot. Ooh, that's cool. We'd have to go to the frost bridge to put that out, or it's worth two to four gold, depending on what we can do. And hey, it has the keyword reputation in case we need that. Well, what do you guys say? Let's do our regale action and complete chapter two. So we need a quest card. We'll discard this spirits card we work so dang hard for. Then we need to show that we have an item. We have our item with Jingasasa Jing here. And then we need a planes card. And we have that with this courier. And we'll discard that card. Boom. We're done with that. So we'll gain a health. We'll flip over to chapter three. And here we have our chapter three. It's a flesh cultist leader. Your actions have caught the attention of the flesh cultists who track your every move. You must outwit them to escape. To complete this, we're going to have to defeat this encounter and spend five gold. We're actually going to have to spend six gold for this. Uh, but we are going to have to go to the arid ruins and complete a study, uh, a study test. And then we also need to get a car with a martial keyword. Here we have our two level two skills that we get to choose one. I don't know why I wouldn't choose the doctor because we can heal one HP. That health is actions, so important. We have three actions left. What I think I'm going to do, this is a little bit risky. I'm gonna move into here. That was action one. Then for action two, we're gonna get rid of this obstacle. That means we get to draw another loot card. But before we do that, I have to remember when I did that regale, I had to spend this gold. <laughs> That's the whole reason I got this gold. So I, I had to lose all four gold. We'll go ahead and grab a loot. And I'm just really looking for uh, gold at this point because we can't hold any other loot. We'll have to discard something. Oh, yes, four gold. That's awesome. Oh, that's amazing. So we just gained four gold from that. I've got one action left, and as much as I'd like to get rid of everything here, I think it's still worth keeping my six health if I can. So I think I'm going to go up here to the nesting woods, 
could be bad because we're going to have to draw a forest encounter. Could be an enemy. No, instead it's a stranger, an inquisitor. It has map. When you fail an influence test, place your enemy token on this card, even if you've already had previous successes on this card. Oh, so if you ever fail uh, an influence test with this one, boom, you automatically have to turn her into an enemy because she's an inquisitor. She's going, oh, do I really want to listen to that demon? <laughs> I'm probably going to leave her alone. She's a stranger. Uh, she's insane. Oh, wait, she's insane. We have our enchanter here who goes up to that inquisitor and says, hello, come with us. You know you want to. <laughs> and we exhaust her. She can automatically defeat an inquisitor. This Inquisitor, totally influenced by the Enchanter, we just defeated her. That was amazing. That was free. So we, let's see, Stranger, Insane, Forced. I don't think I need any of that. So I'll grab an ally. And I don't need more loot, really. So I'm just going to grab the two gold. Uh, that gives us a total of six gold, which is exactly what we need for Chapter 3. The ally we find is an athlete. Ooh, a plus one, plus one. Nice. Deed Veil. Vale. Add one success to a place at your location. Hmm. We'd have to go to the Imperial Forest to put this down. He's also worth four gold. Cool. That'll complete this round. We'll draw our next night card. We have a famous person. <laughs> I love that. It's a stranger. Another insane. Place the strangers at the stranger at the fool's den. That's a forest location. Well, I can't believe how tempting that is. The Fool's Den is just right up here. We'd actually gain an AP by going over there, and we'd immediately gain him, because once again, he is insane, so we can use our Enchantress to totally uh, influence him to come with us. <laughs> and he has three more gold. We could get another ally. Hmm. But I really want to start getting rid of these, uh, these uh, plot cards. That's the whole reason why I'm over here. Well, it's too good for Lucius to pass up on. He's going to go ahead and spend 1 AP to move into the Fool's Den, gain 1 AP back, then use his Enchantress to automatically defeat that famous person. We're going to bring him to our team. <laughs> we'll definitely gain the 3 gold that's on here, but we don't need him specifically, so I'm going to go ahead and draw an ally card instead, and we have an Archer. Ooh, uh, plus 1 to our Sneak. We haven't really been sneaking. Uh, when a battle starts, your foe loses 1 HP. If the foe has no HP left, skip the skirmish step. Oh, that's cool. She is martial. She's martial, you guys. We need that keyword. Uh, we can put her down if we go to the Forsaken Glade. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, her ability is cool, but I have a feeling we're just going to discard her. Oh, that's a bummer because I think her ability is pretty sweet. I'm then going to spend three out of our six precious actions this round. We're running out of time, you guys. I might be going too slow. <laughs> But I'm going to go one, two, three to get rid of this obstacle. We'll then go ahead and draw a loot card for that or token. And we get two more gold. Wow, we are loaded with gold. We have a total of 12 gold, you guys. <laughs> okay, so then what we're going to do, and this is also considered uh, a removing an obstacle. So it's the same type of action, but we're going to finally defeat our first plot. When first the taint infected this settlement, it grew in stature, its buildings becoming more prominent and imposing, its people dressing more richly and aspiring to greater roles in society. But very quickly, their heady aspirations were corrupted, and before long, vicious rivalries developed and followed by ring-fencing of funds diverted away from helping the people. Now the town descends into ruin while its elders indulge their unnatural vanity. Use all the resources at your disposal to reestablish order here. So in order to defeat this, we have to discard two loot. I'm going to go ahead and discard the map to go to the forest and the boots. I'm not really using those. I'll discard those two to defeat this, room, uh, this plot card. This actually goes into our hand and it's got quest and... Uh, what's the other word? Honor, in case we need those keywords. So that'll go into our hand. Our hand is actually four cards large right now. It's pretty good. And since this is using the same action as removing an obstacle, I believe we still get to grab a loot token. So that's not bad. Oh, we got a spyglass. Gain one discovery AP. Cool. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use one of our loot tokens, this map token, to let us move to any plane's location. We're going to go to the location that that flesh cultist is. We moved ourselves right into the arid ruins. We'll go ahead and now try and complete our chapter three, this interlude. Our book value is four. We have three actions left. Let's see what we get. First one, two successes. Love it. Okay, so we'll do two here. We'll spend our second action 
Okay, I need two. Uh, no, I need three more successes. Oh boy. We'll roll. Okay, we've got two more there. That's two, three, four. I'm going to go ahead and call upon the fates. I'm going to discard our final fate token to give us our fifth success. So we have just completed this. And because we defeated this, I don't think we actually have to do a regale action. We've got a martial card. Oh, I'm so bummed. I wanted to keep that archer. Can't do everything. I will have to discard the archer that has our martial keyword. We also are going to have to pay six gold, which should be easy for us now. <laughs> Here's our six, one, two, three, four, five, six, six gold. Our next one, we're gonna have to do eight, but we have now completed chapter three. Everything you have done has finally brought you to this moment. The trees quiver and sigh, moist with unknown secretions, swaying in the cold air. Their bark is not made from wood, but from skin and bone, branches of legs and arms reaching, clawing skywards. Abandoned clothing and items lay strewn about the area. The leaves and flora comprised of fungal growths and pustules which sprout, flower, and leak runny residue as you stare in transfixed horror. Desperately overcoming your nausea, you begin to incant the magical phrase that will reveal the tomb of agents to you at last. <laughs> Ugh, we have to get through a lot of gross stuff. So we are going to have to spend eight gold here and do a regale action. We need an item, which we have. We need a merit, which we actually have. That's our lord yeah the lords of a servant card we have a merit we don't have a conjuring though so that's actually all we need to find cool we'll gain one additional xp so now we have seven xp and we can either uh add this professor ability add two successes to a study test Ooh, or we have um calligrapher defeat a quest at your location hmm well, you know, I think adding two to a study test would have been really nice a couple times. Let's go ahead and grab that one for, yeah, for our skill. We have one action left. Let's go ahead and use it and move ourselves here to the Heaven's Gate. Uh, we don't want to end here because we'd lose one health. So, and I can't get rid of this yet because I need a place encounter card. I don't have one. We are going to have to draw a Badlands encounter. Hopefully it's not bad. Oni. Ooh, that, that actually looks really bad. Yeah, that's super bad. Okay, Oni has a total of five health. He will have surprise on us, but we are going to use one of our skills. We haven't used it in a while. It's the one that says uh, your foe rolls one last die in this battle round. Yeah, we're going to use that one. We'll veil it or exhaust it. So he'll still only roll four dice. Thank goodness. Uh, but look at this. At the beginning of each battle round, he'll heal one HP. And he has five health. <laughs> We're not going to go down easy, though. We're going to exhaust our spell Kinetic. And uh, when we do this, it says when battle rounds start, gain plus three until the end of this battle round. So our first fight, we're going to be at a four plus three here. That's seven. And we can have our tiger form here by adding plus two to our fight. That's nine. So we're going to roll nine to his four. And that's still pretty good. We've already called on fate today, so we can't do that again. We're just going to have to roll and see what we get. Nine dice to four. And look at that. Wow, he has no successes. We have one, two, three total successes. I'll take that. So we did three damage to him. That doesn't kill him, though. And he'll heal by one. So I'm just going to place him over here. He's got a total of two damage. For this next round of combat, he'll still roll four dice. I will now only roll the four plus two. So that's a total of six. So I'm going to lose these three dice. Yeah, let's remove these three. Uh, it's going to be six dice to four. Uh, maybe he can roll like that again. All misses? <laughs> I will take that. Let's see. We'll roll. Come on, don't be a hit, don't be a hit. Yes, it's a three. Okay, we did two hits. He's going to heal one of those. Uh, so he, he'll go to four damage, but then he'll heal one, so he only has three. He did not hit us yet again. I love these black dice. Okay. We're going to roll again for the next fight. Attack. Oh, come on. Come on. Two successes. Okay, we only have one success, and he did hit us for one damage this time. So we're going to lose one health. We got one success, but then we're going to lose that success because he's going to heal. So I'm not going to do anything. We'll just re-roll. Oh, man. Uh, anything else I can do? I don't think so. We're just going to hope for white successes. Here we go. One, two, three. He did hit me for another point of damage. So I lost two health, but I did do two more, well, three more points of damage. That will take him out. I actually think I'm going to keep him 
as a rumor card in my hand because I'm going to go ahead and use my Diabolicist and bring him back to help us. <laughs> Four attack, I'll take it. Also, I'm going to take the three money as well because that will give me a total of eight that I can use for my regale action for my chapter four of my personal saga. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and veil my Diabolicist and put Oni on top of there so I have that. I lost two health, but thanks to the Jingasa here, I can gain one rest AP because there's no encounter cards in our location, so I'll gain us one. And I've got my doctor here. I'll sew up some of those wounds. Laugh at that Oni. <laughs> Didn't even do anything to me. I got all my health back. We'll end the round by drawing our next night card, and we have Major Earthquake. Reveal. Discard all cards from Frozen Portal, then place this card on Frozen Portal. Map. No encounters may, may be drawn here. Frozen Portal. Okay, there's nothing there, but we essentially have to just place this card on the frozen portal no encounters may be drawn there i still think though because this is a planes location the plot card will come out we got rid of one just in time for another one to come out and this one will have to discard one fate or one rumor uh, and if we don't get rid of it treat all class cards as though their ability text and attribute bonuses are blank <sighs> our class that would mean we wouldn't be able to use oni in our final battle if we did the if if we did not take care of this this is all the way up top over here i don't know how we're going to get to all these locations so we can't place any more encounter cards here that's why this is here and this is just denoting that we have a plot card there that we can try and take care of we have a total of three plot cards that one over there is going to be insane to try and take care of because we have three obstacles on it Ugh. Man, and I still need to get through chapter four and then do our finale of our personal saga. Yeah, I'm running out of time. I just counted and we have 12 night cards left. <laughs> yeah, um, my guess is we aren't going to win, but I'm still having a blast playing.